stuff we do Wednesday, chapter 9 will be on the final. All right, here we go. The loudness, yeah. This is a, this is a great um, way to see math's role in the real world. So let's make sure you're, you're getting Because a part of what I want you to get as you take these college math classes um, is what is math and how does it connect to the real world? Is math real? Let's review for a second. No. Is math real? No. No, by itself, on its own, math is not real, right? We made that clear? So that several times. If I said I saw three on the way to class, I can't do that, right? Math isn't real. But math is used to do real things. Perfect case in point right here. Loudness. How loud is a sound? We made up a system of numbers... To loudness, right? For louder, we made a system. Quieter, uh, well, what's the system? Decibels. decibels. We made that up, right? Sounds don't know how many decibels they are. They don't say, they don't come with that, right? Right? The world we live in is not created so that the, it says it's how many decibels. We made that part up. We just said, let's make up this thing called decibels. Now, why'd we do that? Because that's helpful to life. Think about if your hearing is going. You're working at a, at a factory, right? You notice your hearing is getting lower and lower. You go to the doctor. He tests your hearing and says, sure enough, your hearing's going. And then, and then he writes a note for you to go back to your manager at work and say, give your manager this note that says, the doctor says you cannot be near any equipment that's louder than, well, then how would he communicate that? If there was no made-up number system for sound called decibels that we made up, back before there was, how would the doctor communicate to your manager not to put you... What would the doctor say? Okay, here we go. When you go to work on Monday, I want you to tell the manager, manager, the doctor said, don't let me work next to any equipment louder than this. And the doctor said it. And, the, and, the, and, the, and, and you as the patient go, wait a minute. Was it this? this or no, 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 This. Yeah, you got it. Right there, that. And you say it all weekend, this, this, then you go to work on Monday. The doctor said nothing other than this, and the guy, oh, is this machine, this, and there, you know, that wouldn't work well, right? That would be a bad system for communicating sound level. What it, instead, the doctor writes the note, nothing louder than 100 decibels. You go to work, the equipment is labeled with how many decibels the sound is, very useful for life, right? That's math and how it fits in the real world. We made it up to describe things that are real to help us live life. All right. So with that in mind, here's the formula that does exactly that. I don't know if you knew there was a sound formula. Probably figured there was a formula for everything. There is probably. All right. So L equals 10. And it uses logs. Here's a real-life application of logs. I over I0. L equals 10 log of I over I0, where the I0 is 10 to the minus 12 watts per square meter. That's energy density. Watts is energy, right? Like a light bulb, how many watts? And per square meter is like a square meter, like a square, well, a square meter is a little bigger. You know, I mean, how much energy in an area, right? It's like, it's like when you go by somebody that's got their bass turned up really loud in their car, and you can feel it thumping on your chest, right? Their sound has energy, doesn't it? Sound has energy to it. That's the measurement of decibels. It's, it's, it's involved with watts in it. Watts energy density. Watts per square meter. Watts in an area. All right, anyway, you don't got to know all that physics. So I0... I do. Do you? All right. Well, not, not now you don't, anyway. I0 is 10 to the minus 12. Just pop it in there as I sub 0. So I'll just rewrite this with, with that put in. Log of I... Over 10 to the minus 12. You do not have to memorize that formula, nor even write it on your 3 by 5 card. I'll give it to you on the exam. I just want you to know how to use it. I don't see there's any purpose in life to go around having that formula memorized or on a card in your pocket, right? Just how to use it. What do you do with it? Just learn a little math about how we would actually do something with it. Okay. So there's the formula. Now, let me give you the plan for this section. Next 45 minutes. I hope we have enough time to do a good job in this section. All, every section, we're going to get real-life application. It's sound right now. In a minute, it's going to be like a s acidity level, I think. Another one's going to be a money one. Anyway, different population, different formulas for real-life things, all involving logs. And there's always going to be two letters. That's how they're going to play this game. See, I've got L and I've got I. The I zero's been, you know, that's just 10 to the minus 12. That's out of the picture. So L and I. 
in this form, anyway. There's two letters. There's always one in the front, one buried in the middle of the formula. So L in the front, I buried in the formula. They're going to play a game. They give you one letter, you give them the other. That's the whole section. That's all it is. You don't even have to read the words. The words don't matter. They're just, just they'll, they'll blah, 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 and they'll give you formula. You just grab that formula, and you play the game. The game is always played the same. They're going to give me L, I'll give them I. Or they give me I, I give them L. That, that's the game. So, which one are they giving me? They say, I is that. Oh, they're giving me I. Put that in for I. I is 3.3 times 10 to the minus. You don't have to mess with the units. Don't worry about it. Just grab the number. 3.3 times 10 to, the, that 10 to the minus 6 is part of the number. So you do have to be comfortable with that. We'll be doing some scientific notation stuff. That's part of the number. So what am I going to do with that thing? Put it in for I. Grab that whole thing and put it in right there for I. Because they're saying that's I. So just pop it in there. <coughs> so L equals 10 times log of I, which is 3.3 times 10 to the minus 6. Whoops. Come on. Don't do that. Things jumping around on me. That's log base 10, right? Yep. Um, over 10 to the minus 12. Good? I just put in the I, right? That's all I've done so far. You guys Okay. At this point, you can just hit the buttons on your calculator if you're really comfortable with your calculator. I'm going to show one or two steps of simplification, which might make it easier for you to push the buttons. But, hey, if you're really good with entering stuff, just do it. You don't need to do any by-hand steps. I'm just, just do whatever's easier for you. If you're good right now, if it bugs you a little bit having these negative powers and fractional power things, then I'll show you a step of simplification that might help you, but not required. You can just enter it right now. Do you do 10 times log parentheses and then the fractional thing? Yeah, so that's part of the trick. you got to know about all that. Yeah, I would, um, I would suggest that you take these two guys and you let them jump. Remember, negative powers jump to the other side of the fraction they're on. I hope this X right here isn't confusing you. That means times. Well, how about I make it a dot? That's 3.3 times 10 to the minus 6. <laughs> So these two are going to jump. Negative powers are going to jump. So what do we got here? Bring it up here. L equals 10 log. The 3.3 is not going anywhere, but the 10 to the minus 12 will come up top and become positive, and the 10 to the minus 6 will go to the bottom and become positive. Are we good so far? The 10 to the minus 12 on the bottom jumped up, became 10 to the positive 12. The 10 to the minus 6 on the top jumped down, became 10 to the positive 6. Negative powers jump then become positive. Good. And then these two will subtract. 12 minus 6. What's 12 minus 6? Six? 6. Everybody see what happened right there? 12. Remember powers subtract when they're vertical? Same bases divided, powers subtract. Remember that? 12 minus 6, right there. Everybody see what happened there? 12 minus 6 made 6. <laughs> now it should be easy to put in your calculator. Just type that in. Okay, I'm going to show... What is it? So just hit the log button. 3.3 times 10 to the 6. I'm getting 65.185. I don't know how far they want me to round. What do they say? A whole number. So it just rounds to 65. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, 10 times log, parenthesis, 3.3 times 10 to the 6th. Did you do 10 to the power of 6? That's power button there. Not the E. E would mean E to the 6th. Just, just the regular x to the y power button or the up arrow, whichever your calculator has, up arrow, or x to the y power button. You guys able to get that in the calculator? If you have trouble, grab me after. They're all a little different, so. That good? 10 to the 6 there, up arrow, or the x, y power button. So 65 decibels. That, that power, that watts, is 65 decibels. <coughs> Sound is, is power. 
in energy, energy, not power, energy density. All right, we good? All right. Now they're going to play the game the other way. Same formula. Doing, talking about sound still. L equals 10 log I over I0. And again, the I0 is always the same. You know what the I0 is? Softest audible sound. Softest. I don't, I don't know what that means. Soft, like so, softest for a human to hear? Or like dogs to hear? I don't know what, what it means, but whatever. You can type it into Google and find out what they mean. But anyway, 10 to the minus 12 is supposedly the softest. Solvers. That's why that's I sub 0. Do you know when you get out of your teenage years, you've already lost some hearing? It starts fading that fast. And England, for a while, London, they used it. It was about 10 years ago. There was a scandalous report. I don't know, scandals, but it was, it was making them look bad anyway. That, um, they were, for a little while, they were using it to control teenagers in public areas um, that were hanging out too late at night. So they would have, like, some in London, they would have some outdoor areas, and teenagers were hanging out, causing trouble late at night, and the store owners wanted it clear just for the older customers to be able to enjoy it without the teenagers causing trouble, I guess. So what they started doing is blaring about midnight or 1 o'clock, whenever they wanted the teenagers to leave. They'd blare a high-pitched sound mm -hmm. that only, teenagers only teenage, 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 teenage ears could hear because when you get a little bit, of, even out of your teens, your ears isn't, aren't as sensitive anymore. They, aren't, they can't hear those sounds. So, you know, like, I could just see me and my wife out there enjoying, enjoying something, you know, and then, then all said, hey, where are all the teenagers? They're just running. That's weird. You know, I wouldn't hear a thing. Oh <laughs> you know, they were, they were scattering the teenagers with the noise. Then they got caught or in trouble or something, hit the news. Anyway, so that's 10 to the minus 12, softest audible sound. So what, what do they give me? They, remember, they, remember how this game works. Every formula, every problem, they're going to play the same game. There's two letters, L and I. They're going to give you one, ask you for the other. Which one do they give me this time? 106. Now, what is that? That's DB, and it says right here, L is DB. So that's L. Everybody with me? So I tracked that down. So they're saying, hey, the L is 106. We're giving you the L this time. Okay, this is the harder way to play the game because I can't just type the buttons on my calculator. i got to actually solve for the I. Does that make sense? i got to get the one that's buried in the middle of the formula. This is the harder way to play the game. So I've got to solve that equation for I. They gave me L, 106. I've got to solve for I. So here we go. We've got to solve a log. How do we solve it for I? First step, I's over here saying, I want to be alone. Get rid of this 10. Get rid of this log. Get rid of this 10 to the minus 12 so that I can be alone on my side of the wall. There's the wall, right? So like peeling an onion, you start with the outer layer and you work your way in, huh? What's the outer layer? <coughs> That 10, let's just divide by 10, right? Got rid of that. Good start. Just peel the onion, outer layer. You just calculate a 106 divided by 10 and be 10.6. Good so far. Got rid of one layer. Now we just got to get rid of the log and then get rid of the 10 to the minus 12 and I will be alone. We'll be done. So next layer, what's the next layer we want to get rid of? The log. Yeah. So what should we do? Divide both sides by that log? No. Like that? It's a log. Good. No. Very good. That's the mistake tons of people make. But we said it even today. I, I'm glad Renee's catching. I hope everybody is. You can't divide by the log. That's a function. That's plugged into the toaster. Right? That's not divide. That doesn't mean log time. A log on its own means nothing. There's no such thing there. Well, then w what, what do you do? Remember what happens when you lose a log? That's been like half of this chapter. What happens when you lose a log? Base stays the base. Other two switch. Remember, whenever you cross off a log, there is no such thing as dividing by log. You lose the log, the special log operation happens. Base stays the base. Other two switch. What is the base? I don't see any low down number. Other than there's an understood 10 down there, huh? So what's going to happen? That understood 10 stays where it's at. And this and this switch. Instead of 10 to that I over 10 to the minus 12 stuff, it's 10 to the 10.6. And the I over 10 to the minus 12 goes over there. Good so far? <coughs> Everybody see that? Wow. So that makes that, that, that's the step that fools people. Are you guys okay with that step? Whenever you need to get, you got to have it really clear in your mind. Whenever you need to get rid of a log, 
That's when you cross it off. Base stays the base. Other two switch. Okay. So now we're trying to solve for I. I said I won't be alone. I'm almost alone. What do you do when you got a fraction? Row over one. Diagonal, diagonal, right? So I times one. That's just I. 10 to the minus 12 times 10 to the 10.6. Everybody with me? Am I losing you? So I just put this over one. Don't, don't be thrown off that it's got powers. Whatever. Put it over one. Make it a fraction. Diagonal, diagonal. And I times one? I. That's I. Now, what happens here? Okay, we could do that, you're, you're right. But remember what we learned about two, two same bases multiplied. Like, what's 10 to the second times 10 to the third? Yeah, the powers, right? Same bases multiplied, yeah, the powers. Right? So negative 12 and 10, so you take 10, negative 12 plus 10 points. So you should add those powers, and you'll get, you'll get minus 1.4. Is that right? Yeah. There it is. 10 to the minus 1.4. Well, they want it in that form, see? They want 10 to something. Yeah, that's just the form they want on that one. And so we'll stop right there with that form. Is that good? I'll see how we did that. So that was a little harder to play the game that way. Abraham, question? Uh, yes, you could. Bring it up and then divide on both sides and subtract powers, same result. That all makes sense? In other words, when you, back when you had i over 10 to the minus 12 is 10 to the 10.6, you could have said negative power jumps up to the top or right or left, doesn't matter. Put it up here, whatever. So it would be i times 10 to the positive 12, right? And then what do you do to get i alone? Divide, right? And then what do you do with powers? Subtract them, huh? When they're vertical. So it would be... 10.6 minus 12, and it would be same answer. Isn't math beautiful? It always works out the same, as long as our logic is good. So same answer either way. Good, good point. Good point, Abraham. That way would be fine. This way is fine as well. Same answer. Questions on that? Is that okay? So the major step is losing that log. What happens when you lose a log? Base stays the base, other two switch, right? You guys with coats on, I, I'm, I'm like sweating with just, it feels warm to me. But <laughs> maybe you're blooded like my wife. She's just colder all the time. Question, you good? Yeah, I don't like that though. Okay, never don't mind. like it? I do, I do like it. Okay, hydrogen ion concentration in cosmetic products, pH, uh, pH is a, a, a acidic level, you guys probably are aware of that, right, pH level is acidic level, you know, what does it mean when the pH is, numbers are higher, it means it's what? Right, you've got it exactly right, yeah, higher pH is, means lower acid level, lower pH means more acidic, uh, I've taken any chemistry. So anyway, whatever, you've got to know all that. Our pH is like 7. Is that, that's our body's pH? Is that what it is? Like kind of in the middle? Okay. So anyway, um, there's a formula. pH is, I'll put it right in here. pH level is negative log H plus. Okay. Now, don't be confused or overawed by that formula. <laughs> it's the same game. What, what game? Two letters. This pH is really one slot. One letter slot. And the H plus, that's enough. Don't worry about the, if that plus throws you just... That's just a hydrogen ion. Right. It's just a chemistry thing. Whatever. We don't care about the chemistry. We got two slots. We're playing the same game. Different formula, same game. Two slots. There's a pH and there's an H. They're going to give me one of them. I give them the other. It's a game we're playing everywhere in this chapter. I mean this section. Okay, which one are they giving me? H. Right there. They're saying, here's H. All right, thank you. That's the easy way to play the game. Minus log, brackets, parentheses, whatever. You can just, just make it parentheses. Who cares? It's all the same thing. 4.1 times 
10 to the minus 4. That's a times, right? So just hit the buttons in the calculator. There's nothing else to do. They're playing the game the easy way on this one. You do, or you could just skip it and just change the sign at the end. Because that's just going to change the sign, right? If it kind of bugs you. Or you could put it on the front. Yeah, it's supposed to, it is supposed to be on the front. I'm getting 3.387. They want the nearest tenth. It's not negative. 3.4. Because that, because that negative in the front wiped out the negative, right? Positive 3.4. Pretty acidic. That's the pH level. Are we good? Questions on that one? So it's the same game. Give you formulas. You don't have to memorize. I'll, I'll write the formula right on the question. Don't need them on your card or anything. They'll just, just know how to play the game. Okay, now they're saying the formula for pH, same formula. Fruit juice. The pH of fruit juice is 3.6. So, take that 3.6, put it in for pH. 3.6. All right. Then solve for the H. So can you solve for this? So given that it's the pH, they want us to solve for the H. So this is the harder way to play the game. See what you can do. So the H is over here saying, I want to be alone. Get rid of this minus sign. And then get rid of this log so that I can be alone. Right? So start with it. Peel the onion. Start in the outer layer. Get rid of that negative sign. Get rid of that negative sign. Um, so you don't know how many times is in a mold? What's that? How many atoms is in a mold? Is that or the Avogadro's number? Yeah, 6.02 .02 times 10 to the 23rd? I can never get that out of my head now. Yeah, I memorized yeah. that in my yeah. college so, okay. years. I don't even know what it is anymore. Yeah. Atoms in a mole. Well, what is a mole? A mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd something. Okay. Yeah. All right. So first step to get uh, the log alone there, divide by negative 1 on both sides. Mm -hmm. So that would be negative 3.6. Good to there? Just divide by negative 1 on both sides. We're peeling the onion, right? Going layer by layer. Okay. How do we, uh, how do we get rid of that log now? Good. Getting used to that. Whenever we lose a log, base stays the base. Other two switch. What's the base? Understood. 10. So cross off that log. Base stays where it's at. And the 3.6 and the H, or negative 3.6, and the H switch. 10 to the negative 3.6, and the H goes out there, or H plus, whatever. Yeah, yeah, we're not, we're not switching any signs. This is a special operation. No signs change, right? Base stays the base. Other two switch as they are. Yep, and that's it. That's, that's the form they want the answer in, 10 to the minus 3.6. Yeah, it, it, just, it just means hydrogen ion. That's just a chemistry symbol for hydrogen ion. Okay. We don't have to do anything with it mathematically. What's the positive anion? Cation. Good. To there. Is everybody happy with that? Super happy about that? All right. Onward we go. The average walking speed, R, of a person living in a city of population P in thousands is modeled by the function R of P is 0.37 ln P plus 0.05, where R is the feet per second, R stands for rate. Population of Boston is 532,000. Find the average walking speed of people living in Boston. So let me write that formula. R of P is 0.37 ln P. These are real-life formulas using logs. So this is a formula for the, for the population of the city telling you the walking speed. Stop for a second. Isn't that kind of interesting? 
What that means is the bigger the population on average, the faster the people walk on average. Right? Like New York City's famous for everybody's racing around. Right? LA, similar, right? Big cities, lots of people, people all racing really around like ants. LA just get stuck in traffic. Yeah, they stop yeah. <laughs> for a long time, don't they? Yes. Isn't that funny that, that there's actually a formula which is fairly predictable? That the bigger the n- number of people in the city, the faster people walk in that city on average. I just think that's I just think it's interesting that it's that predictable, isn't it? That's like a psychology thing right there. <laughs> Someone has paid money to research this kind of stuff, is what it is. That is their life. Yeah. No, I just think it's interesting that we are that pred- I thought psychology was very interesting when I took psychology and college. I thought it was very interesting how predictable we are in, in different behaviors. Anyway, all right, let's crank this one out. So same game though. See, there's two. Don't let that, you know, I hope the parentheses over there don't confuse you. RP. If it bugs you, just cross this part off. It's just R. That's just like F of X. You know what I mean? That's just, just a function. But I know that bugs people sometimes. So to just say, hey, that's R and that's P. Same game. Got a formula, got two letters. We're playing the same game. Which one are they giving me? Population of Boston, 532,000. All right. So what should we do? Should we take that and plug it in for P? Yes, but here's the trick. Only plug in 532. Don't plug in 532,000. Why? Because they said these magic words. P is in thousands. Do you guys understand that? I know that's tricky. Right? So, like, okay, think this way. What if I said, hey, guys, I'm going to tell you how many students are at Fresno City College this semester. Seems like a lot, because I can never get a parking spot. It's getting hard. Well, in the middle, I couldn't get a parking spot. Um, I'm going to tell you how many students at Fresno City. I'm going to tell you in thousands. You ready? 25. So what do I mean? I don't mean 25 people. There's more than 25 people in here. I mean 25,000. How do you know? Because I said I'm now talking in thousands. So when you say you're talking in thousands, you just say 25. You don't say the thousand, right? Well, that's what they're doing there here. When they say this, they're saying, hey, P is in thousands. We're talking thousands. So when they tell you uh, the the population is 532,000, what do you put in for P? 532. Because P is in thousands. Does that make sense? They won't always do that. Then they'll reverse it sometimes, and they won't say, if they don't say anything special, then you plug in the whole 532,000. But if they make that special statement, P is in thousands, you know what that means. All right, hit the buttons. So. Um, I'm getting 2.3, so they want tenths. So 2.4. Guys getting that? Guys and gals getting that? 2.4? That's how fast people walk in Boston. Funny how predictable that is. Do you know Fresno's walking pace? Uh, Oh, good point. Yeah, the population's just a little below that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Play the game backwards now. Let's see. Walking speed, same formula, R equals 0.37 LNP plus 0.05. And what are they giving me? Well, this seems the same. Population of Tallahassee is 11,000. Well, that's the same. What's different? I don't want to do that problem. That's the same. We're just going to put in 11, though, right? Not 11,000 because, again, P is in thousands. So I don't know why. Why do I have two? All right, number seven here. College loan, $30,000 is made at 8% interest. Ouch, that's a big interest rate. Compounded annually. After T years, the amount due A is given by the function A of T equals 30,000, 1.08 to the T. There's our formula. A of T is 30,000, 1.08 to the T power. Again, if these parentheses bug you, just cross them off. A, T. There's my two letters. Same game, right? Got a formula, got two letters. This is the game we're playing everywhere in this section. So which one are they giving me? Right there. College loan of 30000 
so they're giving me the A. And see how they're asking me for the T right here? Everybody good there? They're giving me the A, the loan amount, that's the amount of the loan, $30,000. Think twice before you take $30,000 college loan. All right, college loan of 30000 equals 30000 1.08 to the T. Okay, can you solve that for T? Let's, we're playing the game the harder way now. It's always harder to find the letter buried in the middle of the formula. Yeah. Is it 30000 or 45000 Yeah. Oh, you're right. Uh, thank you. I'm just spacing out. Yeah, no, you're totally right, and I'm totally wrong. Yeah, 45000 huh? At what amount? Yeah, reach 45000 Yeah, thank you. Hmm. Got to read a little more, being a little too casual here. 45000 thank you. 45000 so now solve that. Solve for T. T saying, I want to be alone. I want to be alone. So get rid of this 30000 and then get rid of this 1.08, and I'll be alone. Start with the outer layer, the 30,000. This is this is a really important one. I hope everybody will dive in and do this one. This has an important lesson. This will see if you're really grabbing the concepts of today. So give this one a try. Whatever else you're doing, give this one a try. This will really let you know if you're if you're laying hold of the concepts of learning. So what's the first step to get X alone or the T alone? Yeah, divide by that 30,000 on both sides. Boom. Isn't that 1.5? Let's make it a decimal. But yeah, you're right. We good to there? This is the step. So everybody think about it for a minute. So don't say it out loud. Give everybody a chance. So that's really important. That'll really let me know whether I'm just talking to the wind today or uh, if I'm doing Charlie Brown teacher, wah, 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 I'm getting through to you. Solve that for tea. <laughs> Okay, so how are we going to solve that for T? Yeah, good. Hitler has climbed into power. That's where I told that whole history story to, for this very kind of situation. Because it's, so, it's hard to remember because you got to do LN, right? Because there's no LN anywhere. It's hard to remember it. That's why I told that whole story. When the letter has climbed into the power zone, when Hitler's climbed into power, when the letter has climbed into the power zone, that's when you go, oh, yeah, i got to do that LN special thing to get that letter out of power. Remember that? You've got to dethrone it. The, the log, the LN, is the special thing we have that takes things out of power. It's a very special maneuver. So LN 1.5 is TLN 1.08. And now it's just divide. That by the LN 1.08, yeah. Now, see, once the T's out of power, right, it, it's, it's cake. It's super easy. LN, just divide by the LN 1.08 on both sides, huh? Just hit the buttons on your calculator. I'm getting five point, how many places they want here? Whole number, oh, so just, just five. Five years. So after five years... Oh, the $30,000 loan will become 45000 because of interest in five years. Yeah, that's why you want to think, think a few times before you take a loan of that With size. With today's interest rates, that's going to be a lot more than that. They usually give real good rates for student loans, but not always. They didn't offer much to me when my daughter just went to Cal Poly, if I could personally complain. Because I guess I'm rich just because I'm a, 
an instructor. I've got five kids and my wife doesn't work. I don't think I'm rich, but Cal Poly thought I was doing just fine. And they said, <laughs> they, they, they gave her like $5,000 cheap loans and the rest they said, how about this huge rate here? And I said, no, thank you. We'll, we'll try to make it work without borrowing those huge, ugly loans. Anyway. All right. Well, there's my personal complaint. Yeah. Okay. Questions on that one? That good? All right. Population of a city, 180,000 in 1992. Exponential growth rate, 1.3% per year. Is expounded growth formula, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we got this formula. The P of T is P0 e to the kt. Pocket? Yeah, it kind of looks like pocket. So, yeah, so that, um, okay, so what are we supposed to do with that thing? Yeah, uh, what the P0, whenever they, I don't know if you've seen that before in science formulas, whenever they put something with a little subscript of zero like that, it means P at time zero, meaning at the start. So the, the starting population in this case. So what was the starting population? 180,000. So I'm going to plug that in. Hey, it, did, did they ever say anywhere in this problem that P is in thousands? Did they ever say, hey, we're talking in thousands now? They never did. So when I put in that P zero, I'm going to have to put in the whole 180,000 not just 180. Does that make sense? Because they never said we're talking in thousands. They never said P is in thousands. They didn't say that. So I got to use the whole thing. Okay. E to the KT. And this, again, don't let that parentheses bug you. Just say, hey, that's just P. You guys good so far? And, oh, and the growth rate. Yeah, I need to tell you about that. The, the K is that one, the K... K equals growth rate decimal. So I've got to take, so K equals the 1.3% right here, the growth rate, 1.3%, and you gotta, you got to change that to be a decimal. So what happens when you go from percentage to decimal? The decimal... Moves two places, right? Whenever you go from percentage to decimal, it moves two places. So one, two back, so point oh one three. Good like that. And that point oh one three is gonna go right there. Point oh one three T. Like that. Put that K in there. Is that good? All right, so now we're playing the same game, huh? We have a formula now with two letters. See how it always comes down to the same game? Formula with two letters. If they're going to give me one of them, I give them the other. What are, what, what are they giving me? Where, they're I don't, not giving you anything. They want the... Oh, they want the formula first off. Okay, looks like in part A, they actually want you to type the whole thing in right there. Let's go type that in and make sure that's right. I believe that's what they want for part A. Then there's two parts remaining where they're going to get more specific with us. So that part's right. Now part B, population in 2010. So this is part A. Part A. So part B, population in 2010. How do I find the population in 2010? Yeah, see how... See what it says about T? I don't know if you can... It's all scribbled up around here. But it says T is the number of years after or since 1992. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, 18 for T. Exactly. Does everybody see that? T is since 1992. So if it's 2010... Subtract 1992, that would be 18 years later. So take that 18, plug it in for T, hit the buttons on your calculator. Is that working? So we get P equals 180,000 E to the point oh one three times 18. So whatever that is.
I'm getting 227,456. What do they want a whole number? 227,456. You able to get that? Not working out? So I just put a, put an 18 in here for T. So 180,000 times E to the 0 0.013 times 18. Nobody's getting that? Ashley's getting it? Mm -hmm. Would it help if I wrote out a little bit more? The calculator will usually look like this. To the power, 0 0.013 times 18, close parentheses, like that. E to the power, the up arrow, or X to the Y button, depending on your, on your calculator. Is that good? 227. So they just want you to say 227,000. They want you to round to the nearest thousand. So the answer to part B is 227,000 people in the year 2010. So this is a formula predicting future population, population growth. Grow to 227,000. Fresno's growing still, huh? Good. Question on that? Ready to go to part C? Is that okay? You guys don't look very happy with that. Are we not happy? <coughs> Just I type this into my calculator. 227,400. And I rounded to the nearest thousand. So 227,400 is closer to 227,000 than it is to 228. And yeah, they want me to round to the nearest thousand. Does that make sense? Well, that we good? If you have trouble getting that in your calculator, come on up. Just take 10 seconds probably. I can help you. I can show you how to do it. But they're all a little different, so I need to help you individually. Okay, so the, the third one. This one's a little harder. So part C is saying, in what year? 200,000. Okay, in what year was the population 200,000? So we've got to take the formula, which was P is 180,000 E to the .013 T. And now in part C, they're saying, hey, population's 200,000. We're playing the same game. We got a formula with two letters. Now in part C. Part C. Formula two letters. Which which letter are they giving me this time? They're giving me P, aren't they? They're saying, hey, P is two hundred thousand. Right? And we want you to tell us when. What is T? When will that happen? So we need to solve that little equation there for T, don't we? Does everybody see that? So T is over here saying, I, I want to be alone. Get rid of this 180,000, get rid of this E, get rid of this 0 0.013, so that I can be alone. This is the harder way to play the game. So we're doing the... Uh, Onion, peel the onion, start in the outer layer, get rid of the 180,000, divide. Hopefully that's something clean, is it? It's, oh, one point, a whole bunch of ones. Just write a bunch of them and keep moving. Good so far? Okay, so what's the next one? We've got to solve for T. It's the last part of this problem. T is saying, I want to be alone. Oh. Hitler's climbed into power, right? I'm trying to key your memory. When that letter is up in the power zone, you think Hitler climbing into power, the letter climbing into power, L in both sides, huh? L in both sides. So let's do that. L in, L in. All right, that's what we do when the letter's in power. The whole power is dethroned. That's what England did and Russia did with Hitler's power play. They dethroned him, right? The armies came in. And so 0 0.13 T, L N E. Is that good? The power came down to the front. And what's L N E? That's just gone. Remember, that's just one, so that's just gone. 
So T said, I'm almost alone. Last step is just divide, right? Just divide by the 0 0.13. <laughs> Boom. T's alone. Hit the buttons on your calculator. Oops. I almost messed it up after all that work. And I'm getting 0 0.810. Did I do that right? Oh, you're right. Look at that. I messed up the decimal, guys. Right right here after the first step. Oh, ding dong. Let's put that back the way it was. It's 0 0 0.013. I moved the decimal. Nobody said anything. Don't let me do that. Yeah. 0 0.013. Sometimes I feel like I could do anything when I'm up here. Don't let me do crazy stuff. All right. So it's 8 point, so I'm getting T is 8.104, something like that. Right, okay, so, um, so now what does that mean? The answer is 8? Remember what T is? Everybody remember? T is what? Years after 92. So you got to add 1992. 1992, this problem will never end. Add 1992 to that, and you get 2,000.104. So, is that in the year 2000? Yes, yeah, so everybody's here. Yeah, so they 2000, and then they say round to the nearest year. So it's in the year 2000 that the population will cross that will cross that threshold. Does that make sense? That was a harder one, for sure. Anything I can answer on that?